Hey, welcome back to Crash. I hope you guys are starting to see some of the changes that are happening in Crash. Um, he's, he's like really not interested in anything Mike has planned for Webb. Uh, it's not like he's been super nice to Webb or even talked to him, but um, and he's not even saying anything to Jane. He's just kind of existing right now because he's so upset about his grandfather. So <clears throat> his, his heart seems to be softening or maybe he's starting to see what is really important in life and what's not, like clothes and material things. So uh, we'll keep going. Chapter 36, February 1st. So we jump ahead almost a month. My mom had gone off to work as soon as she woke up. My dad was away on business. Mrs. Linfont wasn't in yet, and me and Abby were in the kitchen with four boxes of cookies from Hannah's Bakery. Abby smacked one of the boxes. I told her not to get anything. I told her I wouldn't take them in. She clawed one of the balloons my mother had gotten at the party store. It popped. I was waiting for her to attack the big happy birthday Abby sign. I won't, she growled again. So don't, I said. I won't. I reached under the sink and pulled out a plastic bag. Take these. The grump fell from her face. She looked at me. She looked in the bag. She looked back at me. What are they? What do you think, I said. Catfish cake. Her eyes bulged. Scooter made them? She looked so happy, I almost lied. No, I said. I did. She looked at me like, who's this alien life form that's taken over my brother's body? She looked into the bag again. She pulled one out. Her whole face squished in on her nose. These aren't catfish cakes. They look like baby doodles. Catfish cakes are mostly just regular brownies. What Scooter would do then with, was make catfish catfish faces by squeezing a string of white icing into each one. I had made them in Mike's microwave the day before. Maybe I'm not the world's greatest artist, but they look like catfish cake faces to me, I said. I had thought she would be glad. Instead, she slammed the brownies down, blubbering, well, they're not, and stomped out of the house. Mike took his football laundry bag to school today. I got news for you, I told him. The season ended three months ago. He grinned. I got news for you. He pulled me over to the lockers. He opened the bag a little. I looked in. It was the jet water Uzi. You're going to get suspended, I said. He closed the bag. He stared at me. You're really acting weird. I felt my neck getting warm. What do you mean by that? I don't know. You're just acting different. Like when I said, let's trick Webb, you told me you weren't interested. And like this, he swung the bag in his face. You never would have said in his, made his voice real prissy, you're, you're going to get suspended. I pushed the bag into his face. I didn't say it like that. He backed off. You said it. It's like you don't want to do anything anymore. You're a dud, man. I grabbed a fistful of his shirt, pushed it up his chin, forced his head back. Am I a dud now? We had never fought each other for real, but we both knew if we did, who would win. He looked down his nose, his face practically tilted to the ceiling. He croaked. You ain't a dud, he gulped. Let me go, man. I pushed him into the lockers and went to homeroom. This afternoon, a block from school, a gang of kids were yelling and hooting near a stop sign. As I got closer, I could see between the heads enough to know it was DeLuca and Webb. I could hear the splatter of the Uzi. I kept walking. I knew what was happening. Mike was firing away, sogging Webb from head to toe, and Webb was standing there, taking it. Like the day he refused to have a water gun fight with me. I could tell when Mike was missing high and the shots would ping off the stop sign. Was Mike right? Was I a dud? Why wasn't I joining the mob and hooting with the rest of them? Why wasn't I jabbing the gun and pumping a couple of rounds of water into the victim myself? In fact, I did feel like grabbing the gun, but I felt more like shooting DeLuca than Webb. Did that make me a dud? Did others see me that way? Crash Kogan, the Crash Man. Suddenly the name didn't seem to fit exactly. I had always thought my name and me were the same thing. Now there was a crack of daylight between them, like the shell uh, was coming loose. It was scary. When I looked back, the mob was a block behind me. Tonight, when I came back from the bathroom to go to bed, I found a note on the blanket. It was from Abby. I am sorry. I was so mean this morning. I guess I was being a big baby. Thank you for making me catfish cakes, even if they didn't look like catfish. Chapter 37, February 13th. Scooter talk. One word. A bye. At first I thought he was telling us to go, saying goodbye, even the minute we got there. But it turns out that's all he says. It's the only thing. Hi, Scooter. 
Bye-bye. How are you feeling today? Bye-bye. Do you like your therapist? Bye-bye. How many days in a year? Bye-bye. In the car, Abby said, can you say anything else? My mother sighed. Not for now, I guess. Her voice sounded even more tired than usual. Each word seemed to drag itself from her mouth. Abby wouldn't let it go. What does it mean? I don't know exactly. I guess to him, it means everything. Abby grumbled. I wish he could say more. I hope he can tell us all the octopus stories again. Let's try to concentrate on what he can do, said my mom, not what he can't do. Don't get old, kids, said my father. It was quite quiet the rest of the way home. As we were pulling into the driveway, Abby piped up. It must have been terrible not to have not to have a single word, and now he has one, and he can use it for everything. I'm going to be happy about that. She bounced out of the car, and she did. She looked happy. Tonight after dinner, I was taking out the trash when I heard footsteps running up the street. It's no big deal for somebody to be running past our house. Half the people in town seemed to jog around, but these feet weren't jogging. They were sprinting. I looked. The sprinter was zipping past our house. It was too dark to tell much, but a couple houses up, there's a street light. And for just a second, there he was, out of the dark and back in, a skinny kid, wept. The first thing I thought was, somebody's chasing after him. I ran to the sidewalk and looked down the street, listening. Nothing. After DeLuca drenched him with the Uzi, Webb was out of school for two days. I heard he, had, he almost had pneumonia. I looked in the other direction. The footsteps sound got slower, then stopped. That meant he was walking, maybe coming back. So I went in. Chapter 38, February 28th. My mother turned the paper bag upside down. Two glittery red high-heeled shoes tumbled out into the study desk. Mrs. Linfont found them when she was dust mopping under your bed today. She said she didn't want to be Snoopy, but she thought it was kind of unusual, and she didn't imagine they were a present for me. She squinted at me. They're not, are they? No, I said, and she is a Snoop. I guess you're right. Does that make me a Snoop too? Yeah, I said. I put the shoes back in the bag. She didn't go away. So, is it a secret? I glared at her. Then I told her why I got them. So why are you keeping them? I told her that, too. Well, that's very sweet of you. If it makes you feel any better, I don't think you have to worry anymore about your grandfather making it. It's just a question on how well he's going to get. She was looking at me funny. Let me get, let me see those again. She pulled out one of the shoes. She studied it. Why are you grinning? I said. Where did you get these? I don't know. I didn't notice. I told you. I was just in a big hurry. She usually come in a box. Not these. They were just sitting on the counter. How much did you pay for them? Six dollars. She started to giggle and wag her head. What? I said. Do you know where you got these? At a store. I told you. You did something you said you would never do, Mr. Price Tag. She tried to squeeze my nose, but I pulled away. You went shopping a second time around. When I woke up the next morning, my first thought was I was in a thrift shop. I hope it doesn't show at school. My mother was probably right about Scooter making it. Last time we visited him, he took we took him some snapper soup in a thermos jug. It's one of his all-time favorite things to eat. My mother fed it to him. When he tasted the first spoonful, his eyes lit up. He was Scooter. He said, a bye a bye I told my sister, the mouse is never going to move into the house out there. It'll come and take the food, but it's never going to live there. She scowled. She didn't want to talk about it. She thinks she's the only one in the house that knows anything about nature. What do you care? She said. I don't, I said. I'm just saying. It was killing her to ask. Finally, she snorted. So, you're saying what? That thing's in the open too much. You should push it back under the bushes. Mice like things dark and cozy-like. That's why it's living in my football bag. Then, I guess the mouse house has to be smelly, too, she said, and walked away. Every night, seven nights a week, Webb sprints past our house. Okay, we're going to stop there, and we'll find out tomorrow why he's sprinting past um, Crash's house. Have a good day.